In this video, we're going to talk about problem 1.2.1 from the textbook. Let f from x to y be a function. Prove that if f is 1 to 1, then a is equal to f inverse of f of a for every subset a of x. And in the second part, we have to prove that if f is an onto function, then f of f inverse of b is equal to b for every subset b of y. So um, in order to solve this problem, we need some important concepts that are the um, an image of a set under a function, the inverse image of a set under a function, and also one to one functions and on to functions. So let me go ahead and recall those concepts before solving the problem. Now, let f be a function from x to y, and a here is a uh, subset of x. Then the image of a under f is a subset of y, and it is defined as follows, f of a, this is the set of all um, f of x as x runs in a, okay? So it can be written as follows, this is the set of all y in y, such that there exists x in a with f of x is equal to y, okay? To better understand this concept, I'm gonna um, go through an example. Now, we consider the squaring function from R to R. So let f be a function from R to R be given by f of x is equal to x squared, okay? So um, this is a squaring function. Now, let A be this set, um, minus 1, 1, okay? Then we can see that f of A is computed as follows. Now, um, you take any x in, in A, so x is either minus 1 or 1, you compute all possible outputs where the inputs are in A, then you get f of A. So over here, f of minus 1 is 1, f of 1 is 1 as well, so f of A in this situation is just the, the set 1, okay? So let's look at another example. Let A be the set uh, minus 4, 4, okay? So what is f of A? Then f of A is computed as follows. Imagine that we uh, square every numbers from um, minus 4 to 4, then we will we get uh, numbers from 0 to 16. So f of a here is 0 uh, to 16, okay? Um, how about this? Let a be this set is uh, minus 1 to 5. Then we can easily see that f of a is this, okay? So now, um, if you square 5, you have 25. You square minus 1, you have 1. However, uh, 0 is also in this interval, okay? So 0, uh, 1 to uh, 1.1 1 .1 are in this interval as well. Therefore, f of a in this situation is equal to this uh, closed body interval. It's the interval from uh, 0 to 25, okay? So um, um, I already ex explained the first concept we're going to use for solving the problem, that is the uh, image of a set under a function. Now I'm going to explain the second concept used to solve the problem, that is the uh, inverse image of a set under a function. Now here f is a function from x to y, and b is a subset of, of y. f inverse of b is a subset of x, and it is defined as follows. f inverse of b consists of all x in x, such that f of x belongs to, to b, okay? So um, to find f inverse of b, we're gonna find all possible inputs x, such that f of x belongs to the set b. To better understand this concept, I'm gonna give an example. And in this example, we consider the squaring function as well.
Okay. Now, in the first um, um, example, let f be the squaring function, and let b be the set consists of only one number. That is one. Okay. So b consists of only one number. Then, how to compute f inverse of b? We're gonna try to find on x such that f of x belongs to b. That means f of x is equal to one. So you will find on x in R such that f of x is equal to one. So uh, you have to solve the equation x squared equals one and get x is equal to one or x is equal to minus one. Therefore, f inverse of b consists of two numbers minus one and one. Okay. In the second example, let b be the set consists of two numbers, one and four. Okay. Then, uh, by a, a similar way, you will find on x such that f of x is one, or f f of x is four. So you get x squared is one or x squared is four, and therefore you can easily see that f inverse of b in this situation consists of four numbers, minus one, one, minus two, two. Okay. Now, uh, in another example, let b be um, the set consists of only one number, that is minus one. Then, what is f inverse of b? f inverse of b in this situation is the empty set because you cannot find any x in the domain of the function such that f of x is equal to minus one. Therefore, this is just the empty set. And finally, let b be the close bounded interval from minus two to four. Then, uh, what is f inverse of b? You're going to find all x such that f of x is greater than or equal to minus two and less than or equal to four. And solving for this inequality, you can see that x is greater than or equal to minus two and less than or equal to two. Therefore, f inverse of b in this situation is the closed bounded interval minus two, two. Now I'm going to explain what it means by uh, a one-to-one -one function and what it means by an on-to function. So here f is a function from x to y. We say that f is one-to-one -one if the following implication is satisfied. and u in x. So uh, if f of x is equal to f of, of u, then x is equal to u. That means whenever the outputs are the same, then the associated inputs are the same. Okay. Now, equivalently, it also means that if x is not equal to um, u, then f of x is not equal to f of u. We also say that f is an onto function if for any y in y, if you take any up of any y in the codomain, there exists x in x. such that uh, f of x is equal to y. Okay, so if you take any y in the codomain y, you can always find x in x such that f of x is equal to y. Okay, so I have explained all um, concepts that are needed to solve the problem. And now we are ready to work on this problem. Now we're going to show that if uh, f is a one-to-one -one function, then uh, for any subset a of x, at first you compute f of a, then it is a subset of y. Okay? And after that, this is a subset of y, then you can compute the inverse image of that set. And what we need to show is that 
uh, f inverse of f of a is equal to a. So um, to prove this uh, equality, we're going to prove by two steps. In the first step, um, we're going to show that a is a subset of f inverse of f of a. Okay, and then we will uh, prove the opposite inclusion in the second step. So, so to prove that this is true, we're going to take any element x in A and show that x belongs to the set on the right hand side. So fix any x in A. Then, by the definition of the limit of, um, of A under F, obviously F of X, this is a, a possible uh, output where the input X is in A, so F of X belongs to F of A. Okay. Now, this set serves as the row of B in the definition of the inverse image. So over here, F of X belongs to set B. Okay, so by the definition of the inverse image of, uh, of B under F, we see that X belongs to F inverse of B, and B in this situation is just F of A. That means X belongs to F inverse of F of, of A. Okay, so um, if you fix any X in A, we see that X belongs to F inverse of F of A, therefore, A is a subset of F inverse of F of A. Now, let's um, continue with the opposite inclusion. Now, we're going to prove that F inverse of F of A is a subset of A. Um, by the way, in the first part, we do not require that F is a one-to-one -one function. That means A is always a subset of F inverse of F of A for whatever function F, okay? But to prove the opposite inclusion here, we need um, to use the hypothesis that F is a one-to-one -one function, okay? So how can we prove this? We're gonna fix any X that is in this set. So by the definition of inverse images, you take any x in f inverse of b, by the definition, f of x has to be in b, and b in this situation is f of a, okay? Then f of x belongs to b, and again, b here is f of a, okay? Now, remember the definition of the um, image of A under F. F of X is, a, uh, is in F of A, so there exists there exists um, an element U that is in A such that such that F of X is equal to f of u, okay? Again, because f of x here is in f of a, so f of x must be f of u for some u in a. Now, at this point, since f is a one-to-one -one function, and now we know that f of x is equal to f of u, x must be equal to u. So since f is one-to-one, -one, x is equal to u. And as you know, u belongs to a. So x is equal to u, and it belongs to a. So from here, we see that whenever you take an element x that is in f inverse of f of a, we see that x belongs to a. Therefore, this inclusion is satisfied. Therefore, f inverse of f of a is a subset of Okay, so uh, we already proved this equality, that is A is equal to F inverse of 
f of a if f is a one-to-one -one function. Note that one inclusion uh, is satisfied without requiring that f is one-to-one. -one. That is, a is a subset of f inverse of f of a for any function f. Now we're going to work on the second part of the problem. Uh, in this situation, let b be a subset of y. Then we can compute f inverse of b, which is a subset of x. Okay. So then, because here this is a subset of x, you can compute the image of this set under f. And our goal is to show that f of f inverse of b is exactly b, provided that f is an on to function. So over here, we have to show that f of f inverse of b is equal to b. Okay, and again, we will prove by two steps. In the first step, we're going to show that f of f inverse of b is a subset of b. Okay, and again, we're going to take any element here and show that it belongs to the set on the right hand side. And note that b and f of f inverse of b are subsets of y, so we're going to use uh, y instead of x for an element of this set. So I'm going to take any element y that is in f of f inverse of b. Okay. So y is in the image of this set a, a here is f inverse of b under f. So by the definition, y can be written as f of x for some x in a. And again, here a is f inverse of b. Then the x is x that is in f inverse of b such that f of x is equal to y, okay? Now, since x is in f inverse of b, what happens to f of x? By the definition of the inverse image, f of x belongs to b. And remember that f of x is exactly y. So f of x is y and it's, it is in, in b. Okay. So from here, you see that if you take any element y that is in f of f inverse of b, you see that y belongs to b. Therefore, f, in, f of f inverse of b is a subset of b. Okay. So we have proved this inclusion. And again, in this inclusion, we do not require that f is an onto function. That means this inclusion is satisfied for any function f. Okay. Now, in the second step, we're going to show that b is a subset of um, f of f inverse of b. Okay. And in this um, step, we have to show that um, uh, we have to use the hypothesis that f is an on to function. Okay, so let's go ahead and work on this. We're gonna fix any y that is in b. Okay, and remember that b is a subset of y. And now, since um, f is an on to function, you can always find an input x such that f of x is equal to y. Okay, now since f is on to the x is. Um, x in x such that such that um, f of x is equal to y. Okay. Now remember that y here belongs to b. Okay. So f of x is y and y belongs to b. So f of x belongs to b. And by the definition of the inverse image, x must be in f inverse of b. Okay. Thus x must be in f inverse of b. Okay. Now, because x is in f inverse of b and y is f of x, so y is in f of f inverse of b because y can be written as f of x for some x in this set. Okay. So this set 
uh, place the role of A in the defi definition of the image of, um, of a set under F. Okay, so then y is equal to f of x, it must be in f of a here, that means f inverse of um, f of f inverse of a, okay? Therefore, you already uh, see that whenever x, y is in b, y belongs to um, f of f inverse of b, okay, sorry, this is b, not a, okay? So, um, therefore, therefore, um, uh, this inclusion is satisfied. Okay, so again, um, to prove this inclusion, we require that f is an onto function, but this is true for um, any function f. Okay, so we have uh, solved problem um, 1.2 by 1 from the textbook, consisting of two parts. In the first part, we Prove that if f is a one-to-one -one function, then a is equal to f inverse of f of a for every subset a of x. And if f is an onto function, then f of f inverse of b is equal to b for every subset b of y. 